worship for the season. Come on, worship him. He's a worthy God. I love his name. I love the call his name. His name is holy. Come on, let's cry. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, come on, with your lips, say holy God. Holy King. Holy, wonderful King. Matchless Father. We love you, Jesus. We glorify you. We honor you, Lord. Come on, let's set the atmosphere of worship. We love you. We praise you, Lord. It's about a relationship. I love you, Jesus. It's about a relationship. I love an intimate place with the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, worship him. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you honor, glory. We worship you, Lord. You've done so much for us. We cannot tell it all. We love you today, Jesus. We love you today, Jesus. Come on, call this name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Put our mind on the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a beautiful Jesus. He's a beautiful King. He's a beautiful King. We love you, Lord. I want to hear the voices of the people of God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Yes. We love you, Lord. Yes. We give you glory and honor, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up. Hearts open wide as we cry. Yes, God, we lift your name high. Hands up, hands up. Hearts open. Hearts open wide. Except for God, let all the other names fade away. Jesus, let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Sing, let all the other names, let all the other names fade away. Come on, I love that part. Let all the other names, let all the other names fade away.
You 
into the matter. So here we go. Let's dig a little deeper into the 11th chapter of Hebrews. First, 
we must note that this particular chapter has been known and recognized as the Hero's Hall of Faith because it is filled with faithful witnesses. Somebody say faithful witnesses. Not just a witness, but a faithful witness. Amen? So we're going to laser focus on one of these heroes, Sarah, Abraham's wife, found in verse 11, and it reads, through faith. Also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Sarah is Hebrew for princess, amen. Although the life of a princess may appear easy and to be desired, the real life of a princess has rules and restrictions. They can't sign autographs, they can't work in an office, they can't eat mussels or oysters, uh-oh, that's where I get off. Wear a bright manicure, they can't have a profile page on social media. Uh-oh, that lost a lot of you right there. They, they can't kiss in public. Woo! They can't go shopping alone. I won't stop there. They can't wear fur. They can't vote. They can't wear, wear ambiguous dresses. It can't be provocative. It can't be sedu seducious. Amen? They can't play Monopoly. They can't travel with the whole family. They can't sit in the wrong place. They can't work in an office, amen. They can't vi visit beauty salons less than three times a week. Now, some of us rested right there, amen. But in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 15, we find that God changed her name from Sarai to Sarah, which means noble woman. So God changed Sarai, princess, the one who has restrictions on being useful, amen, to Sarah, the one who is now of a useful state. God gave Abraham better by presenting him with better help. Somebody say better help is coming, amen. You are not too good of a help if your mind is not conditioned as one of higher esteem. She, the Bible declares that Sarah noted God as being one who was faithful to his word. She counted him faithful to whatever he had said. So when God says in Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 40th verse, that he already prepared it, are you ready to receive what God has already prepared? When we find ourselves trying to work it out and figure it out and fix it better and make it look right, we are caught up in a state of not believing what God has said. Whatever God has said, it is already the case. So let's look a little deeper, if you will, into Sarah. Amen. She is the mother of faith. As we esteem Abraham, her husband, as the father of faith, Sarah is the mother of faith. Amen. So we're looking at Genesis, the 17th chapter and the 19th verse. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. Somebody say indeed. And thou shalt. Thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after them. So God established the fact that not only are you noble, Sarah, not only are you a better person, Abraham, but you shall have better coming out of you. I'm an I'm a see. What you are is what you will produce. I'm an I'm a I can't feel nobody this morning. Whatever God has already declared about you, that's what you are and that's what you shall produce. 
Are you victorious? You're going to produce the victory. Are you greater going out? You're going to produce greater wherever you go. Are you better coming in? You're going to produce the better when you return. Amen? So God has already established a fixed plan for our life. He said that Sarah, your wife, Sarah, your help, Sarah, your companion. So you have enough with you to make God's better happen in your life. Whatever it is that is around you, make it work towards what God has given you. He has already given you the word. You are coming. You are coming out. You are coming through. You are coming over. So begin to work that what you have. Amen. Work it until you see what God promised already is going to be in your life. Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. The Bible declares, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. Isaac means laughter. He will laugh. So God was telling Abraham, he said, yeah, I understand it's been rough. I understand that trying to get your mind to change from idolatry was a rough trip in itself. Trying to get yourself to really conceive and understand that my ways are higher than your ways. That's a rough journey. Trying to get yourself to really consume the thought that God would choose you amidst of all the wonderful people you see is enough to send the mind swirling. To send yourself on a trip called I don't know and I ain't understanding. Right, yeah, Amen. But God is saying it's not about you, but it's all about me working through you. Something better is coming through you. I'm not finished working with you. I'm not finished getting glory out of you. That breath you breathe, it's for my glory. I'm not finished using it. That's why you're still breathing. He said, the plans that I have towards you, they are good and not evil. Something better is coming out of my mind and through your body. Something better is coming out of my mind and through your life. Something better is coming for you for my glory. Say it! Say it! Say it! Say it! I'm preaching better than y'all responding. So God came and had a little talk with Abraham even in your shot. He said, listen, son, I understand it's been a while you've been on this journey and don't feel like what I've been telling you is going to happen. It don't feel like you're getting any closer to manifestation. Am I talking to anybody today? Yep. It doesn't feel like things are going to add up to be as you declared in your word, God, for you said, and we know that all things work together for the good. But God, this right here don't seem like it's working for my good. It seems like the more I try to get over it, the higher it gets for me to have to climb to get over it. You say, God, the boundaries and the hindrances, the barriers seem to add up more and more. The more you speak, God, the more barriers it seem to be. Am I talking to anybody today? The more you seek God, the further away he seems. The more you bury yourself in tears before God. It seems like the more tears you have. And after a while, you tell God, right now, somebody is saying to God, I'm not going to cry no more. I'm not going to beg no more. I ain't even feeling like throwing up my hands no more. Yeah. But oh God, I'm still in your presence with my hands down. I'm, in I'm still in your presence with yeah. no more tears in my tear duct. I'm still in your presence for some way down on the inside. Yeah. Won't let me give up. Some way down on the inside. Won't let me give in. Some way down on the inside. Keep telling me, remember what God said. And I'm trying to argue back. 
and say, but it ain't happened yet. Remember what God said, but I don't feel it coming. Remember what God said, but it ain't looking good right now. Remember what God said, but my heart is hurting. Remember what God said, but they still keep hating on me. Remember what God said, but, 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 and the louder you try to get, the harder that push things, the more you try to resist, the more that push stays. Keep on believing. Don't you dare give up. Keep on hoping. Don't you dare stop dreaming. Keep on going. You gonna run into it. Keep on going. You gonna meet God's promise. Keep on going. God ain't through. Cause you ain't through. Cause you woke up this morning just to meet a five foot woman who's telling you God ain't through. God promised he can't lie. You might have told some lies, but God ain't you. You might have proposed another way, but God ain't you. He ain't moved about your way. He ain't moved about your thoughts. He ain't moved about your thinking that this is it. It is over. It is done. But God is saying right now to you, something better. Joy that I'm thinking in my mind. The joy 
for their child to turn around. But let me witness to you. Come here. Let me talk to you. If God save you at the time when he saved you, don't you know God ain't ran out of saving ability? God got an appointed time to meet with you just like he met with you. He got an appointed time to meet with your child. Don't you dare be discouraged. Don't you dare be downhearted. Don't you dare start to hate. Don't you dare be resentful. Don't you dare be misunderstood. It is all right to cry sometime. Go ahead and cry. Go ahead and weep. Go ahead and complain to God. He can take it. Make your supplication unto the Lord. And then come out of that room with your shoulders squared, with your head lifted. Remember this one thing. I've been saved since 1985. May 2nd, round about midnight, I came back to myself. Speaking in unknown tongue, I couldn't stop my tongue, and I ain't tried to stop it since. Yeah. But I was a mess. I was my mother's worry. I was my mother's frustration. I was my mother's shame. I was her ridicule. I was her hurt. I was the tears that she bottled up for as long as from about the age of 12 until about the age of 35. My mother couldn't change me. My mother's prayers went up to God and they stayed there from the age of 12 until the age of 35. Her prayers Lord, help my daughter. Her prayers. Lord, deliver my daughter. Her prayers. Lord, do something for my daughter. Her prayers. Lord, fix my daughter. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, one day, one day, I met a new dear truck. Yeah. 
says the way you raised them the way you changed in their eyes is a constant reminder you come from good stock it's a constant reminder that you ain't supposed to be out here it's a constant reminder that you ain't no junk cause you don't come from junk somebody decree and your children something better is coming say yeah I feel like dancing for somebody I feel like dancing the victory for somebody because see Abraham he was on a long journey with the Lord it wasn't enough for him to leave his family. Right. Some of us being devoted to family would think that that was all it took. Family got a deep root. Family got a strong tie. Just knitted and so bonded together. You would think that once you leave your family. Okay, now here it comes. I can shout to victory now. Cause I did it. And then you wake up. A few days later, and God is saying, now, I want you to do this and that, and go in this and that, and think this and that, and you say, wait a minute, I've given up what you told me, I've done what you said, and now God, you're telling me that I got to do some more, I got to give up more. Come here, Mark, the 10th chapter and the 30th verse. The Bible declared that Jesus said, he answered Peter. Y'all know Peter. He always had a question. He always had a pondering. He always had another answer. So he began to ask Jesus in the 29th verse. He said, what? In the 28th verse. Hold on. Because I got to preach to your doubt. So you believe what I'm saying. Mark the 10th chapter. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Yeah, yeah. He says, yes, God. Mark the 10th chapter. I'm sorry. Hold on. You're going to stay right there while I get this book. huh? Because don't nothing answer me like the book. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Come on and praise him today. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Anybody believe it? Anybody believe it? Anybody believe it? So mark the 10th chapter and the 28th verse, it reads, Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Huh? Anybody feel like, God, you done told me something better is coming, and I keep dealing with this mess. You done told me something better is coming, and it seemed like the more I try to believe it, the more worse things happen. The more worse things come up. I pay off the light bill, the gas get cut off. I pay off the tuition, and here come the car note overdue. I can't win for losing, it seemed like. But Jesus answered Peter and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that have left house or brethren or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, comma, um, uh -huh. we'll do it for Jesus. Huh? We'll walk in the name of Jesus. We'll say in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible said, and the Gospels, the whole road, the Bible, the Word of God. So for the name of Jesus and for the word of God, he said that he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. How is 
houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. Somebody want to get off right there. But we got to eat the whole roll. Right. What does the whole roll say? You're going to have houses with persecutions. You're going to have lands with persecutions. You're going to have wives with persecutions. You're going to have sisters with persecutions. You're going to have children <laughs> with persecutions. So let it ride. Somebody say let it ride. Let it ride. Let the persecution come and give God glory. Let the persecution come and give God praise. Let the persecution come and remember this. In the midst of persecution, you're in the company of good people. So great a cloud of witnesses. The Bible declares with persecution and in the world to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last and the last first. Everybody don't want to suffer. They want the blessing without the persecution. But you don't understand. The blessing is the A clause and it's followed by the B clause. The A is the blessing. The A is salvation. The A is deliverance. The A is healing. The A is salvation. The A is the Holy Ghost. But that B clause is persecution. Lied on. Talked about. Misunderstood. Disrespected. Dishonored. That's the B clause. So when you find that you're doing good and then with that is another fight. Rejoice. Give God glory. Give Him praise. Because you're in the suffering of our elder brother, Jesus Christ, who did no wrong. Something better is coming to you. Say it. Say it. Heaven and earth. So this is what Sarah encountered. Amen. She encountered being faced with all the thoughts in her mind of what had come against her and her husband. And no doubt, this is the thought processes that were fighting against Abraham as well. I've given up this. I've been following you, God, all these years. Huh? I've been doing what you say all these years, God. And now you're going to tell me in the midst of this that I got to keep going in order to get what you promised. You can't just give it to me. You know how we do. Come on. I did this. Now can't you just give it to me? I did that. Can't you just give it to me? God is saying, what you suffer much for, you'll appreciate greatly. Come on. The greater the price, the more value. The greater the cost, the more you reverence it. You won't just walk in and break a thousand vases. You won't just walk in and throw a ball in the window. You gonna take care of it because it costs you so much. So God is saying, I know where you have been, but I'm your God and I know where you going. You going to better, you going to better because I'm changing your mind by my word. When you see in the Bible that the apostles suffered, rejoice when you suffer. When you see in the Bible where they lied on Jesus and you know he was perfect, rejoice for you in good company. When you see in the Bible that they left them for dead, he knows you've been left. He knows you've been rejected. He knows you've been denied. 
He knows you've been murdered in character. He knows. He knows. He said rejoice. Within that rejoice. Rejoice. I say again. Rejoice. Who am I rejoicing with, little lady? Who am I rejoicing with, mother? Who am I rejoicing with, Pastor Cunningham? You're rejoicing with me. You're rejoicing with Jesus. You're rejoicing with the angel. For when you don't let it get you moved, when you don't let it take you off your square, you're calling in heaven to give you some strength. You're calling in heaven to give you a lift. Anybody want to lift? Anybody need a lift? Rejoice! Come on, that's right. Rejoice. Rejoice. It's hard, but rejoice. It's rough, but rejoice. Don't feel like it gonna stop, but rejoice. Come on, the Bible, the Bible. It says that, and God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name laughter. Yep, you're going to call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant. No, 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 He said, I'm going to establish my pledge. I'm going to establish my allegiance with your son. I will establish my covenant with your blessing. I will establish my covenant with your blessing. I will establish my covenant with your blessing. Somebody put that in the comments. God will establish his covenant with my blessing. He say for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. Watch this, verse 20. And as for Ishmael, somebody, I want you to recognize that Ishmael is all your mistakes. Hmm. All of that that you keep telling yourself is because of this and that and the other is the reason I don't have my better. He said, and as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Huh? He heard you trying to tell him that because of your Ishmael's, you have to wait. Or it's not time. Or I just might as well look for something different. God is saying, behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall be he beget. And I will make him a great nation. God blessed the mess. God blessed the mistake. Now, what God wants you to do right now is look back over those mistakes that you keep elevating and magnifying. He said, take a look at it and see what not there. See what not still with you. See, then you make a great escape when you should have been dead. See, then your mind snapped back just in time before you drove over that cliff. Oh, no, 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 Messiah. He said, see, wasn't I always there? Huh? So God blessed your mess. Now somebody say, I'm dropping it like it's hot. No, 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 Messiah. Come on. It's a hindrance. It's a distraction to keep remembering old messes, to keep remembering old mistakes. So what you messed up? Abraham did, and we still preaching Abraham. Saul became Paul, and he wrote over 90% of the New Testament, but he was a mess. Killing the people of God. Oh, God want to use your mess for his glory. God want to use your mistakes for a foundation that God did it for you. He'll do it for others. God turned your mess into a message 
that encourages you in the midnight hour, round about now, with all this going on in my life, I would have had it rolled out and snorting one at a time. But God took the snort out my nose. He took the snort out my head. And he made me snort his word. God took the habit out of my soul. And now I got a habit for reading his word. I got a habit for living his word. I got a habit for turning the other cheek. I got a habit for giving to those without. Oh, I don't want to break the habit I now have. For it brings me life. It brings me joy. It brings me peace. I ain't running because nobody chasing me. I ain't running because I'm guilty. But I'm running for my life. What has apprehended me? Say it! Say it! Say it! Yeah. Oh, you all not happy. My, 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 see. Anybody happy, say it. Anybody happy, say glory. Anybody happy, say hallelujah. I'm happy today because I found out something I thought I was waiting for. I already got it. Something better. I got it already. Something better has already been given to me. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Let's journey on. We're still looking at the mother of faith, Sarah. Amen. How in now we're going to Genesis, the 18th chapter. Hold on, because I'm almost done. Hallelujah. Ma, 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 ma. Hey, ma, na, 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 see. Ha. Glory. Somebody put it in the comments, in all caps. Something better is coming to me. Ha, ma, 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 see. Genesis, the 18th chapter, verses 11 through 15. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. That means she wasn't having no more menstrual cycles. That means she wasn't moody no more. Oh. That means she wasn't on the up and down no more. Come on, can I talk to you women? We're always looking for better without making this better. We want to go into the better just the way we are. But how you are will not fit in your better. Well, what you mean by that? You said I already got it. Yes, it's a promise that has been laid up for us. And it calls us higher. It calls us deeper. But we can't fit in it if we don't fit in the word. The word of God conditions us for better. The word of God conditions us to be more useful. The word of God conditions us to be more advantageous. But beloved, we cannot compromise to make ourselves fit. It won't work. We got to eat the whole roll of God. So here, the Bible says that Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in years. Yes, we've all been on this journey with God for a while. Huh? We've been doing since we've been doing. We've been down this road since we've been down this road. Huh? And the Bible says that therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying, After I am waxed old, shall I get pleasure? My Lord being old also. Now she got to blame Abraham for her problem. I'm sure Abraham was tired of blaming. Amen. How, do you, how many of you tired of blaming somebody else for the mistakes you've made? Yeah. Huh? 
Haggai was Sarah's idea. How many ideas have you put into motion that God didn't get with? That God didn't say do? He didn't ordain it from the beginning, huh? What God has planned, he don't need you to help him bring it to pass. Oh, that was a good place right there to praise him. How about that number C? What God has declared, don't you fool yourself. He ain't forgot he told you he gonna do it. Huh? Because when time passes, we seem to pass with time away from the promise of God, thinking that God is like man. We respond to God like he is absent-minded or he don't keep a good record or he ain't got a good list. Beloved, God hasn't forgot all, somebody say all, the things he has promised you. Hallelujah. But we got to fit in God's plan. He says, will, she said, will I have pleasure? Verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord? Hmm. At that time, amen, she's saying, God, I know you're God of all. I know you're a ruler of all. But is this thing just too much for me to believe you for? Is this thing too great for you to use me to bring it to pass? God says, no, I'm going to use you. No, I'm going to overshadow you. No, I'm going to overtake you with the blessing. Somebody say something better is coming to me. Hmm? He says, she says, and the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Verse 15, and I'm closing. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. I want to present to you today, beloved, that Sarah, our mother of faith, was not being disrespectful in laughing. She was not being dishonorable, and she was not walking in disbelief. Oh, no, but Sarah, down in her soul, conceived the word of God, and her soul spoke what a mind could conceive. Her soul declared that, that God had already promised. Her soul had the message from heaven that her mind was trying to put together. Her soul had the message of God that her mind was trying to logicize. You know we try to make it logical. It got to make sense in order for us to begin to see it. But Sarah's soul, somebody say my soul. My soul, my soul. My soul, oh God, is indicted in a good matter. My soul, oh God, is conceiving your truth. My soul is believing your word. Your word says I'm healed. My soul say yes. Your word says my children are saved. My soul say yes. Your word says I shall be delivered. My soul say yes. My soul say yes. My soul say yes. Sarah's soul got the message before her mind could unbelieve it. Say yes. I believe God. Help my unbelief. I believe something better is coming. Help my unbelief. I believe something more useful is coming. Help my unbelief. Cause I can't use what I got now. If you don't bless it, bless me God. Bless what I have. Bless what I have. Anybody believe? Anybody believe? 
believe that something better is coming. What you believe is what will order your actions. If you believe something better is coming, you don't mind getting rid of what you got. The only reason you hold on to what you have is because you don't believe you'll ever get more. You'll ever get better. You'll ever get different. But somebody who is bold enough and courageous enough to believe that something better is coming, just take all the junk you got in your hand. And I want you to wear back like I'm wearing back. And I want you to throw it away from you and say, God, I'm ready for better. That was for you. I'm ready for better. I'm ready for better. I'm ready for more. I'm ready for usefulness. I'm ready for advantageousness. I'm ready. The devil has had advantage over me long enough. Now I'm ready to take on what you say. You say better is coming. I'm getting rid of old. I'm getting rid of uselessness. I'm getting rid of the things that keep me bound. I'm getting rid of liars that keep me bound. I'm getting rid of backstabbers that keep me bound. I'm getting rid of the doubtful that keep me bound. Everything that keeps me bound, I'm cutting it off. I'm cutting it off. I'm cutting it off. Say it. Say it. that Sarah denied that she laughed and that she was afraid. Come on, now you're on the edge of being pushed into a place of no return. Now is not the time to be afraid, to speak out what is really going on, what is really inside of you. What is really boiling inside of you to come out? What is in your view? What can you see happening? Huh? Amen. I got so tired of my living room lying on me until I had some men come in and tear down the things that I couldn't use in the living room and refurbished it. I totally did it brand new until the old living room has no signs in the new living room. Come on. What is it that you need to get rid of to bring your better to you? Huh? To bring your better in your life. Amen? I'm reminded when my husband and I were six years married, my husband and I began to believe for better. We began to believe for a new house, not a new apartment. We were in an apartment. We needed a house. You got six people, you need a house or a condo that you can build yourself. You can make it to fit you, right? So we begin to believe God for a house. Amen. We begin to tithe up. We paid our tithes to the man of God. Amen. It's in the Bible. <laughs> When Melchizedek got, gave the blessing, amen, he was tithing up. So we began to tithe up, amen. And as we did that, I had bought some new pieces trying to make what I had better. I say to you, you have made what you have as better as you can make it. Now it's done. Well done, good and faithful servant. <laughs> so... Amen, it was time to move, amen. But the place had become infested with roaches. So I said in my mind, I'm not taking one thing out of here that can't be replaced. 
And I'm not taking nothing that will house the mess that roaches bring. That was good for somebody. So, amen, I told the young woman, amen, she's a member of our ministry now, amen, but we have befriended everybody in the apartment, and as I was coming back in the house one day, I ran into her, and I said, we moving, so you come upstairs and see what you want before they junk it, because we're not taking nothing with us. So she came up, and she began to look and point her finger, mm-mm, yes, mm-mm, yes, and she began to look at the brand new thing I had just put together. It had took me maybe two hours to put the thing together. You know how furniture today, amen, they make it do it yourself. It ain't delivered in one piece. <laughs> amen. So it took me about two hours to put the thing together. Amen. And she knew that because they would hear me banging and hammering. Amen. Folk have seen you trying to fix your life, trying to put it together, trying to make it be according to who you are now. That's all. What you're trying to manifest outside of you, what has become on the inside of you, the newness, the better, the wholeness. You want things around you to look like that, right? So you've been working on it. Amen. So it took me about two hours to put this thing together. Amen. And, but I didn't care. She pointed at it. She said, this? It was very nice. The piece was very nice. Come on. When you transformed on the inside, you see as God sees. You see better, so you want better, and you buy better, and you do better, huh? So the piece was nice, and I said, mm-hmm. She said, she stopped making gestures with her voice, and then she said, you sure this? She said, I'm talking about this. I say, I'm saying yes, amen? So no matter how you have valued those things in your life, they have gone as far as they are to go in your life. And now God is saying, will you let go of that for the better that I have for you? Please, beloved, I beseech you, don't diminish God to a house. Don't diminish God's better to a car, to a job. Huh? But God's better is what has already come. And that is him being in you, a well of water springing up into everlasting. Huh? God want to be in you. So then what's in you will attract better around you. Amen. Amen. Beloved, don't diminish God to those friends that keep putting you down, keep tearing you down, and you saying, yes, God's better. He going to make them act right. He going to make them do right. He going to get them saved. Don't diminish God to a handful of people. Huh? When his better is multitude. Somebody say something better is coming to me that I can't contain. Ah, manaranabasi. Right now we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, that we have the mind to esteem you as our God. We reverence you as our God, our Lord, our owner, our possessor, and our king, our ruler, our provider. And now, God, we lift our souls up before you in your presence now. And we ask that you seal this word in our hearts. That we may not sin against you. For all past is gone away. And we decree and declare that all things, oh God, are made you. For with man, everything is impossible. But with you, God, all things are possible to him that believeth. And right, God, right now, God, we decree it is so. It is so. It is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you believe it, put a praise on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. That all things are new and ready. And now, for those of you watching who are not saved, you don't have the Lord as supreme in your life. 
You are not in covenant relationship with our Lord and Savior. He is not your Lord or your Savior. We want you to repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you a sinner needing to be saved. I ask you, God, to forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my ignorance. Forgive me for all things hidden and secret that are against you. And now, God, I accept you as my Lord, Savior, God, and King forevermore. And I thank you, God, and I'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. It is so. It is so. It is so. Amen and amen. Beloved, if you believe that, you are saved. Now, go and tell somebody. Why don't you share it with us here at New Vision of Victory International Ministries? We would be glad to hear your testimony. Send us an email at visionofvictory at yahoo.com. Or you may inbox us on Facebook or on Instagram. But we would love to hear from you. Amen. It is your time now to receive something better. I love you. Have a great eternity. Bye-bye.